I'm T Black Tricks One and go fuck yourself. Aladdin motherfuckers. How is it going? Please do try to ignore the fireworks. Now, ten years ago, um, the first Spider-Man movie came out starring Tobey Maguire. Um, it was one of the highest grossing movies of all time. And um, since then, there are two other movies wh which, you know, I think got made the same amount of money. And, you know, this trilogy has, you know, was one of the biggest franchises of all time. And the third one came out in 2007, and it was awful. Maybe maybe the quality of the movie wasn't, you know, the worst, one of the worst of all time, but it was really just a really mediocre follow-up to two really, really great movies. And I guess, like, in 2009, um, Sony decided just to scrape the series and just reboot it for some reason. Maybe they were expecting a good reaction, but no, the movie reviewing community went up in flames. And, uh, so, you know, over time, people's opinions went from dreading this movie to actually be looking forward to it. Um, I think, you know, as the, the quality of this movie looked better and better, people looked more, um, looked forward to it more. Well, I was never doubting the quality of this movie. It seems like a lot of people were trying to pick out things that made this movie look awful, but, and, you know, that was what they, were, you know, weren't looking forward to, but I, I thought the, the movie looked good. But, however, up until today, I still was not happy with them rebooting the series. I grew up with Spider-Man. The first Spider-Man movie in 2001 or 2002 was the first PG-13 movie I ever saw in theaters. And I remember there was a whole fiasco about it. I remember when it came out and that was the big thing, you know, to go see was Spider-Man. I remember, you know, ev all the other kids were like, oh, you saw Spider-Man? You know, you're so lucky. Because some people are too young, I guess, to see it. It was like Lord of the Rings, I think, came out around the same time. You know, the, if you saw Lord of the Rings, then you were like, you know, so, so lucky. I went into this movie just trying to forget the whole, you know, other Spider-Man series and just, you know, say, okay, how was this movie just as a whole? I'll just, I'll just judge it as if, you know, the other Spider-Man movies did not come out at all. And I'd have to say, um, you know, I, I really liked it, but however, I did not think it was good as the first two. Definitely, definitely better than the third one, however. There are a lot of changes to from the original Spider-Man. Instead of Mary Jane, it is Gwen Stacy, and you know I, I love the setup of this movie too. Um, I think they got better actors. I think Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone are much better actors than Tobey Maguire and Kristen Dunst. Now the main villain of this movie is the Lizard, who um whose human version is Doctor Connors, who worked with um Peter Parker's dad. You know Doctor Connors lost an arm in his you know experiments, and he tries to get his arm back, but his experiments go awry, and he turns into an evil lizard. Meanwhile, Peter Parker, while fucking around in the laboratory, gets bit by a radioactive spider and turns into this superhero with uh, po the same powers of a spider. Everyone in their roles here I thought was really good. Dennis Leary plays um, Gwen Stacy's father, and you know he looks exactly like William Dafoe, which is kind of weird. Andrew Garfield, I think, does a really good job taking over from uh, Tobey Maguire. However, he plays him really, really awkward and almost painfully awkward. I mean, he looks me makes me look like a fucking womanizer. I thought Mark Sheen was a great takeover from um, Craig Robinson. Craig Robinson? I thought Mark Sheen did a great job um, taking over as Uncle Ben um, from C Craig Robertson. I think they could have done a better job of, you know, picking out a villain besides the, the lizard. Um, you know, because just the fights with the lizard, I mean, they were, the action in this movie was directed very well by the same director who did um, 500 Days of Summer. Uh, just, I thought they could have picked, you know, a more, a, just a better liz um, villain and you know, better design villain just, than just, you know, a giant lizard. Emma Stone and Andrew Garfield's um, relationship were believable. Um, still, just, it, it's the most awkward relationship I've ever seen in a movie. I mean, at first, you know, they're in high school, so it's good. Once they're in, you know, love, you, you believe it. There's a really random performance by C. Thomas Howell in this movie. Um, C. Thomas Howell is awesome, so I was glad, but, I mean, it was pretty damn random. So overall, I'd say, um, I did really like this movie. I'd give it an 8.5 out of 10, probably. Um, I know I, I, you know, can't give the, the review as if I didn't really like it, but no, I really, really did like this movie. And I am looking forward to a sequel. I am willing to go along with the series. It's just, I do miss the old Tobey Maguire movies, but, you know, times, the times they are a change in. Yes, um, okay. Anyway, uh, I will see you guys later, hopefully for Savages maybe, so yes, bye.